guys. Uh, what, I'm at uh, Hamvention, really enjoying myself. And I'm very, very lucky to be here on the MFJ stand. But even more importantly, I found Martin Jew, the owner and designer and main man. So, Martin, how do you do? Oh, I'm doing just fine, Martin. I'm glad we still, we both have the same name. <laughs> well, two Martins is better than no Martin. Yeah. Well, um, I am the founder of MFJ and uh, um, actually started playing with radio when I was like eight years old and I had always wanted to uh, 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 sell products because that's the way that I grew up in the state of Mississippi. I was born and raised in Mississippi and uh, became a ham radio operator back when I was 16 years old in 1960 and started building a kit for $9.95 and I used to walk to the classes that I was teaching at Mississippi State University with bags of parts and waved them around to my students and asked them if they would like to put these kits together for 25 cents a piece. They were our first production line. All right. But we have gone from there to uh, over 2,000 different ham radio products and we make more pieces of ham radio equipment than any body else in the world. Uh, we uh, have distributors in over 35 countries. We make a range of products. Um, almost all of it is made in Mississippi, and uh, they range from antenna analyzers, which uh, we developed the first antenna analyzer, which uh, has been, uh, uh, different versions of it have been made through, throughout the world, but we've got antenna tuners, we have high gain antennas, Ameritron amplifiers. Um, uh, but this is, um, shows um, what a, um, um, a meager beginning uh, can accomplish in a country like the U.S. Yeah, yeah. So, so as I said, I said to you at the start, Martin, I think in, in the UK and probably outside of the States, most people know you for your antenna tuners and your antenna analyzers. And I've got to say, I have two of your antenna tuners and I have a antenna analyzer. I have a 269, had it about 15 years. Absolutely brilliant piece of kit. It's almost like a, um, a test lab in a box, isn't it? Oh, it is. I mean, it, it will uh, substitute for a uh, signal generator uh, a frequency counter, antenna analyzer, it can measure inductance, capacitance, it can find a short in a piece of coax or a long, a, an open in a piece of coax, it can even tell you how long that piece of coax is. Yeah, yeah, so it's a very versatile piece of equipment. Now a friend of mine, who is also a podcast presenter with us, tells me that you even use your own product on the production line for testing in-house, so if you're using it in-house, you've released a good product into the environment. Oh yeah, yeah, we use as much of our products that as we can in producing more products. In fact, sometimes we will uh, design a piece of test equipment and then it becomes a product. Sounds good to me, sounds really good to me. Now, I know today you have got some interesting piece of equipment we're going to see. It's an MFJ1234, and I believe Howard's gonna show us it really interesting it's uh, like a shack uh, server isn't it oh yeah it will uh, totally replace your computer but the main thing is if you plug it into your radio and the internet connection you can operate your radio from anywhere in the world with just a browser I mean from a phone from an iPad from a tablet from a laptop from a computer but it's also a general purpose computer where you can send and receive email, browse the internet, log on to QRZ. It even has a FCC database built in. So a little box, you don't need your computer anymore. Yeah, that was certainly great. And uh, let's say we'll, we're going to pop over and see uh, Howard in a second for a big demonstration of that. Martin, let me thank you for your time because I know you're very busy at the show. Most appreciate you taking the time out for us. Uh, well, thank you very much, Martin. Yeah, thanks, and hopefully we'll be talking to you more often. That'd be very nice. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay.
Right, now I'm with uh, Howard here, uh, W6HN. Howard, you're the designer of this uh, lovely piece of equipment. Guilty as charged, Martin, and how nice to meet you, and thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you too. Uh, now, this, this when I spoke to Martin Dew a few minutes ago, he was telling us that this is the absolute best design thing for uh, operating abroad. Well, Martin has never been known for being modest, and uh, but... I'm very pleased that MFJ decided to carry this as a product. It's something I've been working on and thinking about for years. So to see it be come into fruition to be here for sale is pretty exciting. It sounds it. Now, you, t you tell me it's a shack computer. It's a, it's a very small little box. It's probably about three inches high and uh, probably about a rectangular five by four on the top. Uh, connects to the internet and a cat cable and you control your rig anywhere in the world. Yes, it will work with any device that has a browser. So that could be an iPhone, it could be a Droid, could be an iPad, a tablet, a, a PC or a laptop, any device that has a browser since the server is just like an internet server. It's browser based. So it does everything that it does through an internet browser makes it very powerful, it allows you to have multiple connections to multiple radios, multiple accounts set up so you can have several users using it. it uh, it's like a Swiss army knife of station control. Yeah. Now looking behind you, you have the uh, on-screen on, on display uh, and uh, it looks very clean and tidy. Uh, that that's, looks very intuitive. It is, it's very a very simple interface. It's easy to get going, easy to use. Everything is pretty much push button controlled, you've got uh, pre-built buttons for bands and modes, you've got user-defined macros that you can set up to do anything you want from sending CW to controlling special functions in your radio. You can tune the frequency by twiddling a knob or pushing on buttons. It's very simple, very easy to use, but very clean. Yeah, say, sounds good to me. Now, on some software control radios, and if I'm asking you an awkward question, I apologize. But on so, some radios, you can get these external, like, tuning knobs. Do you envisage having something along that line soon? You could, but it's, uh, I hope you have a chance to try the one behind me. It's very smooth, right on the device itself. It's almost like a physical knob. Yeah, yeah, fine. As I say, I wasn't picking a fight on that one. It's just something coming to my mind yeah. as, as we're talking. Now, the model number for this, it's an MFJ... 1234. It's a one, simple two, three, use four. As one two three four you got it yeah well i can't i won't forget that model number i mean that that is a real uh, you did well getting that one since this is your baby uh, did you have to fight martin for that one? Oh no i i was very surprised martin came up with a number for it and that's fine with me yeah that's great well in fact this is on sale for just a shade under 300 dollars uh for a shack control computer a shack um uh, factory server and you said you can do other things on it. You can do email and other bits and pieces as well as control your radio. Absolutely. Word processing. All the digital modes are supported through FL Digi, through JT Call, through WSJTX. So, it's again, it's a, a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. And because of the size, looking at it, you're not going to have lots of power drain. And this is the sort of device you'd be able to leave on 24-7, I suggest. Yes. You can, it's 10 watts. So that's a lot different from a PC running 24-7. But <clears throat> you can also turn your radio on and off from the remote interface. So the radio doesn't need to be running when you log in and push a button and up it comes. Yeah, that sounds great. So uh, as I say, I think the guys must uh, start looking out for it. You've got it in your hand. You can see it's not that massive a device. and uh, But I think it might have quite a massive uh, input to MFJ. Yeah. Hopefully as much, it'll be as much love to say the uh, analyzers, the 259-269 range. Well, that's a tough goal to beat, but I'm going to work on it. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Listen, Howard, thank you very much for your time. And uh, as I say, uh, thanks for your time today telling us about this. Thank you very much, Martin. And again, thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Yeah, cheers. So.